To the young generation of Samoans born and raised overseas in New Zealand, Australia, and America, or wherever you are on the face of the planet, Talofa greetings and welcome to another edition of our Tangaloa tradition teachings. It's a podcast from the motherland Samoa that celebrates discovering Tangaloa on Sundays at 12 noon. Who is Tangaloa? Well, Tangaloa is the creator spirit that your ancestors believed in that was replaced by Yehovah, the white god the Palang is brought. Tangaloa in English means boundless force. You cannot see Tangaloa, but you can feel it as a vibration. You can feel it as an energy, as a consciousness, as that boundless force that can move and influence you in the way you think in the way you do things. Like the wind, it's invisible, but it can move and influence the trees in the forest to dance. 
So the Lord is the divine presence we cannot touch. We can only experience it. This week, we'll experience Tangaloa through unlocking the spirituality behind the word Fernanga. And in doing so, it brings us closer to discovering Tangaloa. So welcome to another edition of Tangaloa Tradition Teachings. And this week, we'll be talking about the word Fernanga. Fernanga. Fernanga is derived from the word Fernai. Fernai meaning agree, in agreement with, or uh, relative to, in relation to. But to show you the, the, the spiritual wisdom of our ancestors, um, when you ask the question, what is the opposite of boy? The opposite of boy is girl. And yet when you say that sentence, when you ask that question in Samoan, it says, Oleale upu fa ngai ole tama ole tendi. But see, the difference is opposite in Samoan means fite nai. And fite nai is the opposite of fiangai, fiangainga. Fite nai is the opposite of fiangai. And yet, when the question is asked in English, it says, what is the opposite? And translates into Samoan, it doesn't use the word fite nai. It uses the word fiangai. And this is one of the, the messages that, that our ancestors learned through creating these words with the manna that they got from Spirit God Tangaloa. Um, because when the English question says the opposite of, the Samoan translates into Samoan saying relevant to. Um, agreement with nothing opposing and the message that is brought there in that one word is that our ancestors are telling us and generations before us that nothing that was created is in disagreement with anything else in creation everything that spirit God Tangaloa created are in agreement with everything else in creation and in the universe. It agrees with everything else in the universe and in our world. So everything according to the psalm or to our ancestors and to spirit God, Tangaloa, everything in creation is relevant to everything else. Just like the trees. Without the trees, we don't live. And without us, the trees don't exist because we breathe out what the trees breathe in and they breathe out what we breathe in. So it's all relevant. There's nothing opposite. Everything is fiangai, fiangai. And that's where our ancestors created this aspect of our culture, a fiangai, which is the term that refers to the sacred relationship between the sexes, between a boy and a girl, a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, which is born from the relationship in the family of a brother and a sister. It's a sacred relationship to the point where the brother is not even to look at the beddings of his sister. And in the old days, uh, the attire of the sister is never to be worn by the brother and vice versa. Like you, today you see a, a boy or wear, a sister wearing a lava lava and next thing you see is the boy is wearing the same lava lava and he's going to play like a pee or play volleyball or, or something. And that is how sacred this aspect of our culture is. Um, and so every word that in our language has a spiritual meaning to it. It's because with the words we formulate our language and the language is the backbone of our culture. 
And you know what the backbone does? The backbone holds us up so we can look out into the world. The backbone holds us up so the world can look at us and see us and who we are. Fear Nyingma. And to implement this Fear Nyingma, there's a saying that goes, meaning the pupil of the eye of the man is his sister. Because somebody pokes you in the eye, you can't see. So your whole world revolves around your sister, even to the point where your life is put on the line for the safe keep of your sister. In the old days, you know, the father and the mother would eat together with the sisters. You get their lau lau, uh, their, their food mat, and you serve them. And none of the boys eat with them. They're always at the back with the, the water bowl and the, the hand towel. And, and, and that's how it was. That's how it was when we grew up. Um, it's because of that fair neighbor, that relationship. Fair neighbor. That's why it's so different from the Palangi way of, of doing things, because the Palangis, the brothers would, would say to a friend, uh, he would say, hey, you want to meet my sister? You want to take my sister out? It's like they're asking you to not, not, this is not because um, this is the next topic. It's um, remaining, uh, keeping your your beauty as a fenaima, as a uh, pure, um, you, you're, as a virgin, your virginity. Um, and uh, next week we'll talk about that. But that's you holding, that is part of this, this equation, and part of this is you uphold that. And you uphold it for your family, the man you're going to marry. So on the wedding night, uh, you, you present yourself to, to the man who's going to spend uh, the rest of your life with. And that's how deep this relationship is. So when, when uh, Palangi boys say to you, you know, you want to meet my sister, you want to take my sister out? Um, it's so contradicting and it's so opposite to how we we look at this relationship. Even to the point where um, when, when they eat, the father and the mother would eat and the girls would eat, even if there's nothing left. And usually when there's something left over, some, some good stuff from the mother and the father, they would push it over to the girls. And then if, if you don't eat, and that's it. We're used to having a, a suwa'e lengi or a suwa'ia and the only fish would go to the father and the mother and the girls and us boys in the back would just drink the juice, the, the suwa of the suwa'ia and, and that was it. There was no complaining, no nothing. It's just, it was part of growing up. It's because to uphold this relationship of the family. How do you know uh, how to treat a feeling. Well, there's there's a good example. If you watch your mom and dad and the way they they treat the faithful, the pastor, the, the reverend minister of the church, how they save the best in your family to give to the pastor, how they save money to give to the pastor, and how they give everything the best to the pastor, the respect and the love they show the reverend minister. That's exactly how our ancestors treat it their failings. Because when the missionaries came, our leaders at the time gave the uh, the, the missionaries the title of Fa'a Fa'a And so the honorific was immediately transferred onto uh, the, the church and the reverend ministers of the church. And, uh, and now that the, the, minister, uh, the missionaries have gone, and it's just us, our Faisi Al Samoa. I'm asking our Faisi Al Samoa to please hand it back and rescind the calling and hand it back because this is a this is an honorific from Spirit God Tangaloa to us for his daughters, the daughters of Tangaloa, the women of Samoa. 
And you see, when we talk about these words in our language, we get to know a little bit more about Tangaloa, the spirit god of our ancestors. We get to learn uh, to discover Tangaloa, and we begin to experience Tangaloa him handing it down to our ancestors and our ancestors incorporating this into our culture so we can live it on a daily basis. And then it doesn't become a theological spin, it becomes part of our lives. Yeah, feeling that. And that's our word for today. And so I hope that today, uh, this week, this will be the guide to our journey this week. And everywhere you go, uh, bring that out, that respect that you have for your family. Show the same to the ladies at the workplace, uh, wherever, and uh, especially in the home, and for the sons and daughters in the diaspora. That's another notch for you to keep in your, in your arsenary of teachings from Tangaloa tradition. And it's basically what our culture is based upon. It's the backbone of our culture. It's respect and love. And you start it from the home when you show it to your sister. And we hope and pray that the silent whispers of our ancestors you hear and you heed in our journey this week. And that the boundless force of Tangaloa is in the words that we speak and the love and joy that we will share with family and friends this week. From all of us here in Samoa, to all of you in the diaspora, Tofa Soifua, Maia Manuia. Yeah. Uh -huh.